All right, well, my watch says 2.30, so I guess we'll get started. Um, <clears throat> hi, everyone. I'm Doug. Uh, some of you saw me yesterday. I'm a search relevancy expert for open source connections. Uh, we're primarily a solar consulting shop, uh, and we help people out a lot with their search relevancy problems. Uh, and what I mean by search relevancy is, is making sure that people are getting the right results for their, for their queries. Uh, it's a very important problem that a lot of times people don't realize until they've got late into the game of their solar implementation. Um, and the last time I did this talk, I did it with uh, a client of mine, Rena, who's kind of the straw man for this talk. So uh, that's Rena. She's a, she's a medical expert. Um, she's very savvy with uh, <clears throat> what doctors are expecting from search tools that uh, address their needs, either for research or, or point of care and that kind of thing. Uh, Rena's company, Silverchair, uh, was uh, instrumental in, in a lot of this stuff. Uh, that was our client that really drove a lot of the stuff that you'll see in this talk. So uh, I think what I really want to talk about is how sales and content curators collaborate with developers. And I think this really gets at the crux of the kind of work we do with search relevancy. It's really about this kind of back and forth that happens between me, the search developer, and the person who knows the most about search. So we've got Rena over here, and she's asking, is that me, hey, this search for myocardial infarction is just really messed up. It does, the, the right results aren't coming up. And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't know what that means. I'm a search expert. I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I have no way of, of knowing what's good and what's bad. And uh, she's, you know, doesn't know how to respond to that. It's like, well, just, just make it work. So I, I go off and sh I try to work my solar magic on that one uh, query to get things, get things to work. It's like, OK, I go off. And, and this really speaks to the universal pattern of search relevancy engagements. I know solar. I know the technology. I know all the ways I can bend a sophisticated token matching system to do all kinds of crazy things. But someone like Rena really knows what makes uh, search powerful and important for a customer. Like why, what is a good search result for myocardial infarction? And not only that, what is a good search result for myocardial infarction in the context of the application that is being developed? So it might be a point of care application where myocardial infarction, typing that in, maybe I'm treating something versus a doctor at his, at his or her desk actually doing research. Maybe they just want to see the latest research on myocardial infarction. So she lives in a world that I, I, don't, I don't really understand and, and couldn't, couldn't really try to understand of medical search and all the concepts and all the use cases around that. Whereas I'm over here and I can help try to help apply the tool to, to her problem. And it's not, medic, medicine is a particularly technical field, but it's not, this pattern isn't restricted to, to that. You also have this in e-commerce situations where you have uh, someone, let's say Bob, who really knows their business. They know what they're going after. They know the kind of search results they want. They know the supplier relationships. They know uh, the kind of user community that they're addressing. They have this knowledge that they spend their whole day living and breathing in and out uh, to acquire. And I'm still over here, and I, I can't possibly fathom Bob's business and what his business requirements are. How, why, why the, his business requirements are the way they are. So with any search relevancy engagement, it takes different strokes. It takes the technologist working closely, very closely with the content expert to really craft good search. So let's revisit our, our team, our search relevancy team. So I fixed the myocardial infarction. That's great. Yeah, I spent, I went away for a couple days. I fixed it, I feel really smart, and I think I'm like the bee's knees. But it turns out I broke something else. I broke half a dozen other things that, that worked. So it's like, well, I reiterate, you know, I'm, I'm a search expert, not, not a doctor. I'm sorry, I don't know. You know, I couldn't have possibly known even what to search for in that context to know whether anything was good or not. And she reiterates, she's a pain client. And I'm like, all right, I feel dejected. And I, I go away for a week and try to fix these other problems. <clears throat> all right. So really, this points to two kinds of problems. 
first off, there's a, a people problem in terms of collaboration. It shouldn't be me working on isolate one problem at a time, shipping it back a week later, only for it to be rejected by someone like Rena. Uh, it should be a lot that there's so much potential for, for politics and stuff to have that sort of siloed uh, expertise going back and forth. So that there's a collaboration problem there that, that's really hard to, to, to get the knowledge lined up from both sides. And there's a technical problem. Search testing is really hard, specifically search relevancy testing. Uh, there's ways that that's a lot harder than doing normal software testing. You have a small set of relevancy rules, a small set, a small strategy that you're working over that affects every search query. So it's really easy to have regressions in, in searches. It's really easy to go backwards on your search relevancy. So we've got this broken workflow that these two things really speak to. And I, I really think that as search relevancy people, we're stuck in this broken workflow and we really need to work on it. Uh, we need technical expertise to kind of give us that, that the, the technical expertise of the, of the content expert to get at what the business requirements for what makes good search. And the search people clearly need us to communicate the, uh, the or, or the, the content experts clearly need us to, to kind of solve the actual search problem. I mean, that's why we were brought on. We've got to translate the business rules to search relevancy rules. So search relevancy, everything. Query parser, the crazy Lucene stuff I was doing yesterday, uh, boost, whatever it takes, magic machine learning. We've got to find a way to apply what's in their head to, to solar. And there's not really a good workflow around that. So, and fundamentally, the fact that uh, the, the collaboration is broken means our testing is going to stink. If the, if the content expert isn't there all the time giving feedback about search while I'm developing search, the quality is just is, is going to suffer. So I, you always need an expert or whoever's owning this stuff, whoever knows the good search to test it. We need someone like Rena telling me this over and over again. And if the first thing I want you to leave knowing today is that search developers don't know what good search looks like. Search developers, for most of the problems that we work on, uh, I mean, there's stuff like name search. But even that, it's like very specific to the business requirements of what the user is trying to get out of it. So search developers, you think, oh, is, I should be able to look at any search page and tell you whether it's good or not. It's, no, I shouldn't. The only thing maybe is Google. But for your application, I have no idea what you're trying to get out of your application. I have no domain expertise. I have no expertise in the, in the, in the business that you're, you're working on. So search developers need help. I basically need an army of arenas locked in a room trying searches all day, telling me what's working and what's not. If I could get that, that would be awesome. So if we think about this problem of, of A, collaboration to get encode business rules into a, a form that's usable by search developers, and B, a, uh, a kind of way to do, make sure we're not having regressions over search relevancy, we can see a lot of solutions in software engineering with things like test-driven development and behavior or domain-driven development or behavior-driven development, where we capture business rules in terms of tests so that we can execute those while we're developing our software. And so for software development, this is pretty much, well, somewhat of a solved problem. It's more of a solved problem than it is for search relevancy. We can specify a test saying, given this guitar tab, uh, when the guitar plays, we're expecting certain notes to play. You know, we, we, we write these tests as software developers all the time. But there's not really anything like that for search relevancy. So, like I said, the first thing is search developers don't know what good search looks like. The second thing is collaborative testing is absolutely essential to get good search results. So whoever is the owner of that content needs to define what good search is. And um, there's no really good tools to help get at that conversation to say, uh, search developer and content expert, how can I encode the knowledge and the business rules of the content expert into a place 
uh, a workbench, a tool that a search developer can use in the same way that I've sort of encoded unit tests in, in my software application so that I can iterate over the process and make improvements and measure whether or not I'm making going forward or going backwards. So and I, when I started doing a lot of search relevancy work, the fact that this didn't exist was kind of shocking to me because as someone who writes a lot of software that writes a lot of unit tests, it just felt like I was making shots in the dark, like, oh yeah, I fixed that problem. But this other, I have no idea how I've impacted it, the whole system. So, and the content expert would love this too. They'd love to be able to have a way to encode feedback in something other than like an Excel spreadsheet that says these are the good results, these are the bad results. <clears throat> and, and I think it's, it's especially essential because when you work in the realm of search relevancy compared to normal software development, normal software development, you might be working over 100,000 lines of code and you might be testing some part over here. With search relevancy, a lot of times you're working over a handful of, of rules that you've encoded or, or processes, and that affects everything. Everything flows through that. So you will, inherit, you will probably break something when you change it, and you need to be able to measure it. So it's even more important that search be tested, relevancy be tested really robustly, more so than just regular software development, just because of how much risk there is to break things. So. I can have this conversation. If I can measure how things change, I could say, okay, Rena, I, I fixed your search. Does it matter that the toe fungus query changed 30%? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We can have that conversation with a content expert. And then we can say, okay, yeah, let's see what we can do to, to, to tweak that and balance the multiple relevancy concerns so that we're not playing whack-a-mole and we're kind of sitting on the whack-a-mole table at the same time. We can kind of have the full visibility to all of the queries. So what, what does this kind of system look like? Um, we think, and what we've been looking at is, given a query why, uh, the simplest possible thing we can do that gets us down the road for the biggest bang for our buck is enter in a query, and let someone like Rena say what documents are good, bad, neutral, whatever. I and mean, this is a classic sort of information retrieval concept of a judgment list where you're saying, here's a, here's a query and here's what I think the results should be in an ideal world. So <clears throat> if I could get that, if I could have judgment lists, at the same time I have a, a workbench tool, I can iterate over relevancy and instantly see based on the, how far I am from the judgment list that a, an expert has put in, how much progress or lack of progress I'm making for, for my search relevancy. So that's really what I want, and now we've invented a, we've actually come out with a product that I'm gonna demonstrate uh, called Cupid that does exactly this, that basically lets people enter in queries, set, type in ratings for, this, for documents that they see, and see how they're making progress on their, on their search relevancy. And it's become kind of our favorite relevancy workbench. We recently just did a project with uh, the Duke uh, Medical System, Duke University, improving their search for things like, I wanna search for a liver doctor near the city. That should bring up actual doctors that are near that city and not general purpose articles about liver disease. Uh, and all, that, all those kind of crazy relevancy rules, we were able to kind of take Cupid and iterate on search very rapidly to get to show improvements. So here's our happy, happy collaborators. We're kicking butt now and taking names. You can try Cupid at uh, cupid.com. So this is, the, this is the live demo part of the, uh, before I go into the live demo, does anyone have any, have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So uh, Amit's question was, what about rapidly changing data sets? How does this approach help with that? Um, I think in those kind of situations, how we've handled that is we tend to have a sort of test data set that 
is in a development setting that we're working over. So an example of that, we did a project through Silverchair for the American Medical Association. And they, they are constantly like updating with new research. And, and the recency of the research is a big factor in the relevancy. So that was a case of, OK, we have this data set. We uh, kind of control time a little bit on that server. And we're going to work over, over it that way. Kind of freeze a, a test sample, yeah. Anyone else? Before I embarrass myself with a live demo? Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. so the question was about using clickstream analysis to tune it after that point. I, one of the problems, I think, with clickstream analysis is that you need a lot, an, enough traffic to make it meaningful. So that's not, uh, not something we've done a whole lot of because of that. Because sometimes you're, we're working over like niche search applications. But the, uh, one thing that we really would like to do is instead of this being a thing that's just driven by some uh, a client content expert that supposedly represents users, to use stuff like click streaming to capture uh, queries uh, from users and see what is good for them and what is bad and when they get frustrated and when they don't. And that would be really powerful because then we could iterate, we could A, show our client where their expectations and their users' expectations diverge and be kind of iterate on that through a workbench as opposed to just rating. So yeah, we see it with people are typing and like you know, and then they keep typing and keep typing and they're frustrated. Yeah. Yeah, I I I've seen that too. It's 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 inter it's interesting kind of the I think Google had the search anthropologist studying how people search for things and try to correct things. That's a whole interesting field in and of itself. Uh, so anyone else before I? Yeah. I didn't hear the last part. Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. So the question was when you have the person's rated three or four rate documents for a query, but there's actually something better out there that they're not conscious of. And how do you kind of know know that? Yeah, yeah. That they they kind of would need to to know that. We have a way of kind of if if a user knows specifically what document they want, they can type in like the ID of the document and, and give it a rating, saying this is a ten, meaning it's a should be in the top ten. And uh, oh, that got loud. And uh, so we have a way of doing that. Um, but yeah, you're right. Sometimes people are. I think this looks good, you know, or they might might not realize that something even better is out there. And sometimes what happens is we will improve the search, and that what they're not conscious of actually pops up, and then they're excited about it, and they're like, "Oh, well, let me give that a rating of 10. It's really good." So, cool. All right. So. I'm going to show off Cupid. Uh, you, you can try Cupid.com uh, or Cupid by going to Cupid.com. And um, so I've set up a little demo site. And the demo is basically just a, so for a data set that we can all understand. We've made a, a cable website, so a cable e-commerce website. I've just called it Cables RS. Hopefully, that's not a real cable e-commerce website. So if we were supporting the search for this, we might sit down with the person, actually, maybe the, uh, the retailer, the, the um, what are they called, the, the person actually responsible for selling stuff, and sit down and say, OK, what queries are important for your users? And it turns out that, OK, there's some mundane queries that we should capture Ethernet cable. 
okay, and maybe HDMI cable. You know, these are the kind of things people search for. You know, and these should, let's see what we get. Okay, these are actually looking like pretty good search results for Ethernet cable. Let's go through and pop ratings on these. Giving each one 10. And um, while this seems monotonous, the alternative that we, and here's an HDMI cable that doesn't fit. The alternative to this that people often do before they work with us is that they do the same exact thing except they're putting everything into Excel or something. Uh, they'll basically, the people who really are very specific about their search results will kind of do the same thing. We'll list, well, I want these results for this query. I don't want these results. So where I'm looking at HDMI cable, and the top four are pretty good, but we've got a bunch of Ethernet cables in here. So I'm going to give those a one. Ten, ten is uh, my mark for this is really good and could be basically the top. One is this is pretty terrible. Okay. So that's how we're doing with these two queries. Now we can take it up a notch and think, okay, what's a really basic relevancy problem that we can solve? One of the things that might happen is users type in network query or network cable, right? Now, if you remember, none of this stuff actually says network in the text. So now we've got a actual relevancy problem to solve, be it a fairly trivial one. And we can see that the search results are kind of all over the place. We have basically whatever has the shortest title because of norms. And it's kind of sorted based on basically the shortness of the title because everything says cable, nothing says network. So let's go through here and we're like, all right, uh, that's, no, that's no good. That's good. We don't want these HDMI cables. So on and so forth. These are all, all these ratings are getting stored in a database behind cupid.com. Okay. So network cable, we could improve on. So I've sat down with, with the person at Cables R Us who wants to really improve their search and knows what they want to get out of it. And we've said, okay, well, let's try to take a picture of where we are right now. Let's take a snapshot of where we are so that when we make improvements, we can see, okay, how, is, how does the current state compare with, with where we were? So what I'm going to do is take a snapshot and I'm going to call it before OSC engagement. Okay. And I've saved, I've saved the current state of, of these queries so we can see how we're, how we're going to progress against the current state. And I'm going to go and I'm going to work my solar magic back here. And I can't see my, uh, there we go. And we're going to solve a pretty simple and mundane search relevancy problem with a simple and mundane um, uh, synonyms list. So we're going to make network and Ethernet a synonym. We're going to see how that affects everything. Okay. And this is all, these are all query time synonyms, so just for the sake of demonstration. Let that start up. Do, 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 do. It's loading up a whole bunch of cores that are unrelated. Okay. So I'm going to come back over here to oops, Cupid. And let's hit refresh on this bad boy. So we can see network cable. We're actually doing, doing better now. We've made an improvement that we can measure and actually say we made an improvement. We've got a little thing, a little icon here saying we need to rate some of these queries. And yeah, oh, these are Ethernet cables that didn't show up before. Let's give them all tens. Uh, da, da, da. And now we're, we're doing great. And so we can say, okay, well, how are we doing with regards to that snapshot that we took before? Well, let's take a look. Say, so, oh, we're doing the exact same thing for this. That hasn't changed. And we can kind of do like a qualitative. This is very handy because sometimes this number, it's hard to, 
create one number for what people qualitatively sometimes just see by diffing two search results. And we can say, okay, clearly we're making progress on the search query. We're, making, we're going up forward with, uh, with the relevancy here. And over here, uh, we clearly have some bad stuff in the search. So that's sort of the mun mundane sort of relevancy problem. Another thing that we might do, and this is the part I always screw up, is we can come over here to our sort of workbench mode. So I clicked into developer settings, and I can pull out a little doohickey that lets me modify what is actually doing, what Solar is actually doing. So I'm hitting the select handler for the sky, which is just a normal select handler without any, any extra special configuration. And I could say, okay, we've got to deal with, uh, with Cisco, Cisco. Let's take it, let's boost on that. So, okay, I always have to do this, def type equals e -dis max, and boost query equals, what's the field name? Supplier Cisco. And let's, oh, uh, really like Cisco. And see what I screw up. Okay, we've actually improved network query. But let's see how HDMI is doing. So when we look over here and we diff these, we can see, well, we think, we think it was a good thing to boost Cisco, but we've completely screwed up our, uh, our HDMI cable. Oh, but now we're having Ethernet cables in our HDMI results when really we should have these HDMI cables that we had before. So we've taken a step backwards. So, and the score has gone down a little bit to reflect the reordering of results. So um, we really should give this a one. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, there's other features here that I could get into if, if you're curious, but yeah. Inter how would you differentiate between Cisco internet cable versus internet cable for Cisco router? Uh, I, I don't know, I'd have to, I'd, I would call you and use your techniques. You mean for the, in terms of the search query? Right, so one of the things that we like to do is uh, there's different, sometimes there's different forms of search queries. We'd like to be able to tie together multiple queries as saying the, all these queries should have the same results. Like for slightly, for pluralization, for stuff that should just be obvious, for stuff like, like network cable and ethernet cable, tie those together, bundle those into kind of one query with different forms of it. Um, stuff that should have the same results, they all share the same ratings, and you wanna know when they get out of whack relative to each other. But yeah, that doesn't, you'd have to add that one at a time, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, so the question was, can you run this on a daily basis? Uh, we don't have a feature right now, but that's, a, that's something we've talked about doing, sort of monitoring more so than, this is kind of set up to be more like, we sit together collaboratively and work on search relevancy, but I could totally see uh, monitoring being a huge part of this, and uh, one of the things that we're gonna be getting into is building out the snapshots a lot more so that it's, you, get, you can get kind of a Google Analytics kind of view of the history of your search relevancy over time for all of your queries that you think are important. Uh, but that's, that's not quite there yet. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, so right now this number, this number is going through about four iterations. Right now what it is is the, what is confusing, what I would really like it to be as a developer is purely a distance from, and I'll show you, you can diff against the highest, what the highest rated uh, results are. Purely a distance difference from how far your current top 10 is from where you would like to be. That, that is uh, not entirely intuitive to people, though, if that are not technical. 
So you kind of have to explain that a lot more because it's not an easy scale to get, get into their heads. Right. So what it is now is, so it used to be kind of purely based on that. What it is now is an average of the scores minus the Levenstein distance of how off you are from, from where you would like to be. So if there's, if like a nine made it up here versus a nine, if a nine made it to the top, it wouldn't be the same, same number. It would be slightly worse because you really want the nine to be below the tens, if that makes sense. So. Uh-huh. Yeah. Get that feeling. That's a huge We're actually, we're working on a, the question was about um, uh, showing the debug query info in a sensical way to users. And we're actually working on a visualization for that. I think there's like solar dot, solar explain dot PL or something that gives that to you. But we'd really like to uh, have a little visualization button pop up that kind of shows you a heat map of like, here's why you're matching, this is matching versus that. Amit? Yeah. Yeah. The question was about the rating, having a 1 to 10 rating. Um, and most people agree with, with you in that it's too many choices. I still, occasionally we're running into people who are, it's, who are like really, really anal about search results so that they do want to be able to debate what's the difference between a five and a six. But most people want like kind of three levels of, uh, three levels of granularity. They want like maybe top three, top 10, and this shouldn't be here at all. That, that satisfies about most 95%. Unfortunately, as a consulting shop, we, we meet all the crazy people, so that have high, high levels of, of demand. So I think we're probably a biased sample by far. But I think that's something that will be changing soon to be a simpler. And maybe there'll be a secret key for the really picky people that we can put in. So I feel like, what time is it? Half hour, wow. Right. You mean do you cop do you copy over do you like copy solar to you and so the question was how, how does this work with, with a customer using this tool? Uh, so we're doing some tricks where the all of the search queries are executed in JavaScript on the browser using JSONP. And what that lets you do, Solar has a lot of hooks that let you cheat like that. If I was at my customer site at a, behind a firewall or something, and I, my, my laptop could access solar, but in here at ApacheCon I can't. As long as this computer can access solar, I can, I can use Cupid. So some people are okay with that, other people are like, we're, that's completely, we hate that, They're storing something in some other service that blows away our security and blah, blah, blah. So we do, we are offering sort of hosted solutions that are more expensive, but, uh, does exist. Cool. Any other? So you guys might get a little bit of, of a reprieve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's true. So, 
So the question was precision versus recall. This, is, this tool is really uh, focuses a lot on precision. And where uh, recall might matter, and it's really just recall in the top 10, is I could go over here and I could say, I really know, want this. I, of course, these are all the things that already match. Let's say do it yourself, see if this comes up. Right, I really want these to be in the search results. So I can kind of do like a sub search to find, I can enter in either a document ID or a, uh, that's something in the title. Cupid kind of picks, the, picks a field and makes it the title field. And, right. Yep, so the, yeah, so myocardial infarction should return heart attack. So what I would do is if there was a document that had heart attack, I would come over here in my myocardial infarction query and, and let, find the thing that has heart attack in the title that my customer really knows that they want to show up and give, give that a rating. So um, I think this number here is going to be configurable so that it can take into account when things are it can, I'm probably going to make it configurable to make it so that it can be a, a pure, pure distance. Because what is nice when it's a pure distance is frequently you'll notice when things should be there that aren't there. Whereas with this, it's intuitive to users to see kind of something that's like an average. Like non-technical people will look at a, a distance and not quite get it. But they'll get the, the average idea of this is a rough average of stuff. Yeah. Mm, and not a number. It kind of fuzzies it, yeah. Right. The question was, um, maybe you should get it away from a number and just use kind of a fuzzy color scheme and I, that's, that's a great idea. That's a really good idea. Maybe you, for crazy people like me, you could have some backdoor way of getting the number, but yeah. So, go on. Yeah. I've heard the, I've heard the name, have you, I heard of the Open Relevancy product, project. I've heard the name. Oh, I'll check it out. Uh, it really should have been shut down a long time ago. Sorry? I, I, yeah, the microphone doesn't like the open relevancy project. Nobody else does either. Yeah. Uh, what I was referring to is the open relevancy project, which was a, 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 a wonderful initiative of the uh, some people involved with solar uh, uh, Lucene and uh, Lucy to uh, uh, do actual relevancy testing uh, under uh, under the aegis of uh, solar etc and uh, unfortunately it just didn't uh, get critical mo uh, critical mass so uh, perhaps if there uh, uh, someday we will resurrect it if uh, uh, more people arise that uh, wind up uh, yeah, having to give talks like this because it's a, a it's definitely an important problem. Yeah, yeah, and what we find is, like our the prototypical customer of Cupid, is someone who kind of sets up solar in Drupal or something, and Drupal kind of gets you going, but then they that's kind of, that's exactly what Duke Medicine was. They were like had this beautiful Drupal site, and they were like. At the last minute, it was, oh, the search stinks. What do we do? Let's call open source connections and they'll work their magic. So there's this like lack, I think there's a whole, from my business mind, there's this whole like set of people, potential customers or potential people who have, you're gonna have this problem and they don't realize it. They're not conscious that relevancy is a thing 
they've just kind of grown up with Google being awesome. And they're like, oh, a search engine, it's going to be awesome, right? It's just going to work. It's going to be psychic. It's going to know. And then they plug it in, and they, we, you have to educate them. No, it's really just a sophisticated token matching system that we play a lot of games with to do crazy things. So it's definitely a problem that uh, we're trying to make people outside of the solar community aware of that like we've really thought of bringing this kind of stuff to DrupalCon and like there's other frameworks in that sort of vein where people just plug it in and get it to work and they're just not conscious that this is going to be a thing they need to plan for and work on. So I think it's definitely an awesome area. Trek. Trek? What's Trek? Uh, what, is, what does Trek stand for? Who remembers? That's them, yeah. It's, a, it's an old school uh, 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 IR uh, organization that's been around for decades. Oh, yeah, they're, the, they're like the academic sort of group that had the, the judgment list like competitions. Okay, then they would do like specific verticals for search and that kind of thing. Yeah, I've heard of, I've heard of them, yeah. Yeah. They still have, are they, they're still around? Sure. Be a fun conference. Anything, any other questions or comments or? Cupid, does Cupid run on premise? I assume Cupid runs on premise to on client sites? Uh, it can do either. It can run, so if you go to cupid.com, you can uh, create a, you can watch me again, give a screen share, which is the same thing. And it's not super responsive design. Don't run this on your cell phone. And uh, you can go and create a, create a, a dummy account, or not a dummy account. I'm creating a dummy account. You can create an account and uh, try it out. And just, if your browser can see your solar, then Cupid through your browser can see solar. So you can try it out that way. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, but yes, we do have on-prem. Uh, we do sell it on-premise. It's more expensive that way because then we've got to package things up and probably make a trip to do an installation. And But yeah, we do support that. So if it sees solar, then you say if it can see solar, the server, it just sends the query to it and then uh, basically re shows the based on the result of coming back. Yeah. Okay. In JavaScript, yeah. I don't know what the status of, one problem I've had is we use JSONP. JSONP isn't great for returning errors because it's basically a script tag failed to load. And one of the things that's a problem, a little bit of a problem with Cupid is to see any errors, you have to click a link that actually goes to the real search results. So uh, I don't know where Solar is in terms of supporting cores, which lets you do cross-origin um, resource scripting, cross-origin scripting, which is the reason you use JSONP to get around this very strict browser rule of you can only talk to the thing that you came from. So hopefully that'll just keep improving. You, you have it just... In this case, you have uh, the only interface you provide is a, just a uh, text uh, query interface to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else? Like to go on once, go on twice? If we have no more questions, it's coffee break <laughs> time. Yeah, fine. And we are starting at uh, 3.45 next. Great. Time. Thank you. So get a little break. Thank you.